At my grandmother's cottage in Michigan, she always reminded us these aren't leftovers because we intentionally made too much food. It didn't happen by accident. These are planned overs. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, we give you thanks for all that's been given to us. It's all from you and not from us. We're grateful for the friends and family around us. The party's over. Welcome to the after party. My name is Brian. I'm your host. And this month, for this project, I'm going to be taking these Thanksgiving leftovers and turning them into something brand new. Now, when I would visit my grandmother at the cottage in Michigan, she would often take what was left over from the meal the night before and turn it into a delicious soup. But she hated calling them leftovers because in her mind, we intentionally made too much food. It wasn't accidental. And so she would make her planned over soup. So I'm going to be taking these Thanksgiving planned overs and turning them into Thanksgiving fried rice. And this is a great way to get rid of whatever leftovers you have in your fridge. This recipe in particular is inspired by Chris Morocco and Andy Bergani from Bon Appetit's Test Kitchen, but you can use this same approach to make any kind of planned over fried rice you want, whether it's breakfast fried rice or fried chicken fried rice, or in this case, Thanksgiving fried rice. So let's get started. Now, regardless of what type of planned over fried rice you're making, you need to start with some fried rice essentials. And that includes fully cooled rice. I happen to have some here as a Thanksgiving planned over. My sister brought some white rice to our dinner yesterday. If you don't have some, go ahead and just make it a little bit ahead of time. Let it fully cool on a, on a sheet rack if you're trying to do it quickly or just throw it in Tupperware and let it cool overnight. I also have three eggs, some scallions, garlic, ginger, as well as some soy sauce, sesame oil, salt, and MSG from the pantry. I'm going to go ahead and prep the pantry ingredients and then we'll get frying. Now it is time to cook. Once we actually get our rice going, it happens pretty quickly. We wanna be able to move quickly through the ingredients, but that means that it doesn't leave a lot of time to develop a lot of char. Now, we're gonna be trying a secret technique a little bit later, but some of these ingredients, I want to get a little bit of color first. So I'm gonna start by pre-cooking the 
Brussels sprout leaves and the cornbread dressing just to develop a little bit more color and flavor. I already hear the sizzle going. That's good. That means that my wok is hot. Now, ideally you would be doing this over some sort of fire so that you could get the wok really ripping hot. This electric wok does pretty well. And for my needs and my kitchen, it's about as good as it's gonna get. So let's go ahead and let these Brussels sprouts brown up a little bit. <laughs> so I know that you can't smell this, but I can. And I think that's about as far as I wanna push it because I don't want them to actually burn. Just pick up a little bit of char. Now I'm going to do the same process with the cornbread dressing. Do the same thing, we're gonna let it brown off and develop some nice Maillard flavor. Yeah. It smells delicious. It smells like Thanksgiving. It's got that sage and thyme and that, that breakfast sausage and the cornbread nuttiness. It just, it screams Thanksgiving to me. Maybe I'll let this last bit go a little bit longer just to get a few extra crispy bits. Okay, so that's prep done. I I've got everything set. I think that it's time to go with that Thanksgiving planned over fried rice. Okay, so this wok is still ripping hot. I'm gonna go ahead and start with my aromatics. Let's let them develop some color. And while that's happening, I'm actually going to pre-crack my eggs uh, into a separate bowl. I have chickens in the backyard and these eggs are from them. And every once in a while, a bad egg gets in the bunch. And let's go with the eggs. Okay. Adding a little bit more sesame oil and in with the rice. This is the first time I'm gonna try this, but this trick comes from the author of Serious Eats in the Food Lab, J. Kinji Lopez-Alt, who actually uses a blowtorch to try to get that wok A if he's cooking not over a live fire. Now he does it while he's tossing his ingredients in the air. I can't do that with this wok, but I can still try to give it a little bit of that extra direct heat, char up some of that oil, and try to get a little bit of that wok -hay flavor. Hopefully without burning anything. I saw a little bit of, a little bit of char up here there. Is it worth it? I don't know. But it's, it's good enough for J. Kinji Lopez, then it's good enough for me. Besides, it makes this video a little bit more fun, right? Okay, let's go ahead and add the rest of the ingredients back to the pan. We've got that cornbread dressing, those Brussels sprout leaves, and some cut up leftover turkey. Okay, let's go ahead and season it now with a good glug of soy sauce and a little bit of MSG just to taste. And there you have it. This is my take on a Thanksgiving planned over meal. That's quite good. That is delicious. Thanksgiving planned over fried rice. And I encourage you to give it a shot. And maybe it's not 
Thanksgiving planned over fried rice. Maybe it's some other kind of planned over fried rice. It, it may be intimidating, but it's actually really easy. Prep your ingredients, take your time, and have some fun. I know this sounds cliche, traditions often are, but I've never made it through a Thanksgiving meal without somebody at the table stopping the conversation and asking that we go around and we say something that we are grateful for. And when I heard that question this year, I immediately knew the answer. I have a list in my head of things that I'm grateful for. Family and friends, health and employment. There are so many things that I have to be grateful for. And, and I know them in the same way that I know what things are red tomatoes and cherries and strawberries and pomegranates and, and that's just fruits. But sometimes those two lists carry about the same emotional weight. I have the emotion of gratitude in me the same way that I have emotion for things that are red, which is to say, not at all. For me, gratitude isn't always an autonomic reflex, the same way that laughter is when you're being tickled or anger is when you're mad. It's, it's more like a muscle that needs to be honed and developed. When I am filled with gratitude, it's the same way that a bodybuilder is filled with strength. It's not the natural reaction to what happens in the world. It is an intentional exercise, intentionally building a practice of gratitude. And I've had to learn that lesson a number of times through the years. I remember when I was in third grade, my eighth birthday party, all my friends and family came over. I had all sorts of gifts that we opened and we started playing with the toys right away. At the end of the day, those toys went into my toy box and they just became toys. They weren't gifts. They weren't things to be grateful for. They were my new toys. And sure, some of them were my new favorite toys, but they were just toys. Until three days later when my mom made me sit down and write thank you notes to all of my friends and family for the things that they gave me. And in that moment, she forced them to not be toys anymore, but to be things that I am grateful for. She helped start a gratitude practice. And as an eight-year-old, I can't say that it stuck particularly well. I had to learn the lesson over and over again. I remember when I was in college, I picked up this book. It is a... Despite how serious the title sounds, it is a very funny, lighthearted, sometimes sacrilegious book, but it's called A Year of Living Biblically, and it's by a memoirist, A.J. Jacobs, in which he tries to spend a year living the Bible as though it were literal, including going into Central Park to find an adulterer that he could literally throw stones at. But one of the days in this Year of Living Biblically, he reflects on the passage from 1 Thessalonians, Give thanks in all circumstances. He writes, I feel myself becoming an extremist, at least in some areas, like my exception with gratefulness. I can't stop. Just now, I press the elevator button, and I'm thankful that it arrives quickly. I get into the elevator, and I'm thankful the elevator cable didn't snap and plummet me into the basement. I go to the fifth floor, and I'm thankful that I didn't have to stop on the second, third, or fourth floors. I get out, and I'm thankful that my wife left the door unlocked so I don't have to rummage for my key ring. I walk in, and I'm thankful that my son is home, healthy, and stuffing his face with pineapple wedges and on and on and on. It's an odd way to live, but also kind of great and powerful. I've never before been so aware of the thousands of little good things, the thousands of things that go right every day. Sometimes my thank yous are directed at no one in particular. It's more of an appreciation than a thanks, a reminder to myself, hey, pay attention, savor this moment. But other times when I'm in a more believing phase, my thanks have an addressee. I'm thanking God. Or the universal laws of nature, I, I'm never sure which, but it gives the act of thanking more weight. That's the kind of gratitude practice that I want to have. Those are the kind of gratitude muscles that I want to hone. And, and if that sounds like something that you might want to work on in this season, I recommend you check out this video's sponsors. This entire series is sponsored by Connect.Faith, and they are a group of people that are unbound by location coming together online to explore creativity, spirituality, and justice. And if developing a gratitude practice is something you want to work on, this might be a great community to work on it with. I, I encourage you to check out their Wednesday night Zoom sessions at 7.30 called Creativity Lab. It's a group of people that changes every night. There are no clicks or in-groups. It's just a welcoming community of people who are exploring the creative process together. Thank you to Connect.Faith for supporting this entire video series, and thank you to you for joining me for this day after a party as we made some Thanksgiving planned over fried rice. I am so grateful for you joining me on this little journey. And my hope for you in this season as ever is that you will be well, you will try hard, and that you will do good in the world. It was the Onceler from Dr. Seuss's The Lorax who said, unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing's going to get better.
it's not. I love you, and I'll see you next time. Good enough. Roll credits.